Today, I'll talk about goats. No, not this goat. This goat. Greatest of all time. Although I love goats and think they're adorable creatures, I don't think they're half as interesting as the goats I'm here to discuss. Though some biogeeks might beg to differ. In every field of art, there exists this debate among people. Who's the greatest of all time? Who's the best to ever do it? And this debate really exists in every field of art. Who's the greatest actor of all time? Is it Brando? Is it De Niro? Or is it Pacino? Who's the greatest pianist of all time? Is it Rubenstein? Is it Horowitz? Or is it Ritter? Who's the greatest author? The greatest filmmaker? Rapper? Opera singer? Who's the greatest Batman? Or even, who's the greatest Joker? I could really go on forever. The point is, this debate's ubiquitous. In every nook and cranny of art, in every little genre territory, you can find people arguing over the same topic. At times, it almost feels like it's natural human behavior that people just have to know who the goat is. But before I think about why this happens, let's first gain a better understanding of what it actually means to be the goat. By the way, how did this term come into existence? It all started with boxing legend Muhammad Ali. Ali would, perhaps very rightfully, call himself the greatest when he was alive. In 1992, his wife made a company to protect her husband's intellectual properties and named it Greatest of All Time, Inc. But it was in the year 2000 that GOAT really established itself as a popular slang when the rapper LL Cool J, who himself is often called the GOAT of rap, released a track titled, you guessed it, The GOAT. I believe the mere creation of this term alone might have somewhat contributed to this GOAT debate phenomenon. After all, as Wittgenstein once said, the limits of our language means the limits of our world. But let's set this aside for now. Now, the GOAT debate became a thing in sports first. Before art, it was mainly about who was the greatest player or athlete. <laughs> Who's the greatest basketball player of all time? Is it Michael Jordan or is it LeBron James? But you see, while basketball fans still love to argue on whether MJ or LeBron is greater, it is generally agreed upon that MJ takes the title by a slight margin. Whereas in art, people will fiercely and unrelentingly debate upon who's the greatest and most likely never reach a majority consensus after all. Why does this difference exist? How can the GOAT debate in sports be contained to a certain level while that in art rages on without limit? The answer is quite simple. Sports have numbers. There are scores, records, and stats to be used as solid evidence when deciding upon who's the GOAT. The reason Jordan is thought to be at least a tad bit greater than LeBron is because he tops in a number of key stats, the chance per game points, free throw percentages, number of championships, or MVPs. I'm not saying that there's no debate. There is. There are people that truly believe LeBron is greater. Conversely, of course, there are also people that think Jordan is greater. The thing is, when those two sides confront, there's objective evidence to support each claim. Mean all in art, there's no such thing as objective evidence. Wait, you might say, arts have numbers too. There are awards, record sales, box office sales, or even stream counts and YouTube views. To that, I will reply, yes, those numbers do exist, but are you sure they're meaningful to the GOAT debate? In sports, numbers have meaning because sports are all about testing the human body's limits. Ever heard of the Olympics motto, faster, higher, and stronger? On the other hand, art is not necessarily about getting the most awards or reaching the widest audience. As of now, Taylor Swift has the most streams on Spotify. But would you say Taylor Swift is the greatest singer of all time because she has the most streams on Spotify? No, not really, right? Does the fact that John Ford holds the most Academy Awards as a director make him for sure the greatest filmmaker of all time? Again, not really, right? No offense, he is a legendary movie maker, but I bet most of Gen Z has never even heard of this guy. I mean, Dr. Seuss sold more copies than Hermann Hesse. But that doesn't make Seuss a greater writer than Hesse, right? You can see for yourself that these numbers don't really persuade you at all when it comes to who's to go. Awards are most of the time either bought with money or heavily biased by race, gender, and trending social norms. 
box office sales, or YouTube views are often a result of wonderful marketing strategies or simply going viral on the internet. It's more than safe to say that these so-called objective numbers do miserably in capturing the value and timelessness of a certain work of art. So then, if numbers don't work, is the GOAT discussion of art doomed to be a jumble of infinite chaos? Well, no. There are some patterns, some shared qualities if you take a close look at who are often mentioned in GOAT debates. I've identified five key qualifiers for an artist to be possibly considered as being the GOAT in one's field. Let's get to them one at a time. The first is technical skill. You cannot be a GOAT without being very proficient in the job you're supposed to do. For example, you cannot be the greatest rapper of all time if the only rhymes you use are end of the line one syllable rhymes, no matter how good they sound. Even if you somehow manage to make the grooviest and sexiest hip hop tracks to listen to, if the only rhymes you use are time, mine, dime, or pit, hit, lit, you won't be mentioned as the GOAT because, well, you don't have technical skill. In order to be the GOAT, you gotta have multi-syllable rhymes, internal rhymes, alliterations, or whatever is needed to make your rap sophisticated. The second is versatility. An actor that takes on similar roles every time, a rapper that reuses his flows over and over, and a pianist that can play only a few pieces. Nobody will regard them as ghosts. Maybe for a very specific niche they will, but in general, no. Think of some of the GOAT composers humanity has ever had. Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven. I mean, these guys could do anything. Their works range from solo piano music, to music for children and beginners, to full-scale operas and symphonies. Versatility establishes greatness. It is basically making a statement, I'm so good that I can do all these different kinds of things. But as you know, versatility alone without technical skill is nothing but an overzealous amateur. These first two qualifiers were quite intuitive, but this third one might raise some eyebrows. Popularity. If you felt during the former part of my speech that I don't believe reaching the widest audience could be a criteria for greatness, you're wrong. I meant that I don't believe reaching the widest audience could be the single criteria for greatness. I really need you to catch the subtle difference here. While being the most popular doesn't equal being the greatest, you cannot be the greatest if you were never popular. A good work of art rarely goes unnoticed. Yes, sometimes it takes a long time, but eventually, somewhere or the other, a good work of art is recognized by people and rises up to fame and glory. Because one thing about, about people is that they love sharing the art they enjoy. So if an artist has the power to win over many people, that is a sign of greatness. Now let's move on to the fourth qualifier, which is innovation. This is simple. You gotta change something in a revolutionary way if you wanna be great. Take Spielberg, for example. Joss not only invented the shark genre, which we're also familiar with nowadays, and used robots for filming sharks, but also basically is the reason why shark phobia is widespread in modern perception. The shaky camera movement applied for the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan was an innovation too. Now you can probably guess why we often call Spielberg one of the goats. The fifth and last qualifier is lasting impact on culture. To be brought up to the goat debate, an artist must have been burned into the memories of people so strongly that other artists are influenced by him. And sometimes his legacy outlives the short mortal life he is destined to have and continues to stay among the talk of humanity. Do you know how many modern songwriters sample Bach's music? Do you know how many times Shakespeare's works were adapted into plays, books, and movies? Do you know how many times Bruce Lee was mentioned in Hollywood films? Well, we all know that it's enough for us to remember them so well after all this time. Some forms of popularity are ephemeral, but it's the ghosts that have both popularity and longevity. So, these were the five key qualifiers of a GOAT. Technical skill, versatility, popularity, innovation, and lasting impact on culture. But, wait a minute. Why do we even talk about these things? Why are we so obsessed with finding out who the GOAT is? Here's what I think. 
I think that these GOAT debates aren't necessarily about finding out a single answer. Everyone knows that art is not math. I think that there's more process, more meaning in the process of the GOAT debate itself. In order to determine the GOAT, we must compare and contrast many different artists. And through that thought process, through that conversation, we get to look back on our culture. We get to establish our own personal definitions of good art. We get to project our opinions of what we think to be the most important values of art. Not only that, but we also get to pay our passionate honors to the works of art we admire. So the next time a fellow sparks up a GOAT debate, don't just walk away from it, for it is a healthy and inspiring debate. And most of all, it's fun. So what's the biggest takeaway here? What's the one thing that you should remember from my speech? Well, of course, it's that Eminem is the one and only GOAT. Anybody has something to say against this? Feel free to approach me afterwards, or we'll have a long and heated debate. Thank you.